control and coordination in the previous chapter we have discussed about various life processes in that how living organisms are obtaining their food and how living organisms are utilizing their food to get energy and how various life processes are involved in producing energy to the living cells for their maintenance and for their survival that is for the existence of the living organisms various processes are carried out at the cellular level to make or to keep the cell alive that is to make the living organism stay alive so here living organisms we quite often use this term living organisms living organisms and this is what we are discussing about in this biology all about the living organisms so even in class 10th in grade 10th also the first lesson life processes you have learned about the various processes reactions that takes place in the living organisms here we are calling them as living organisms that means that they have life how do we say that these particular objects are living organisms and these objects are non living organisms on basing which criteria you decide we have been learning this since your grade 3 or grade 4 living organisms reproduce living organisms breathe living organisms grow living organisms they increase in their height they reproduce they breathe they eat so this way there are so many characters living organisms respond to the stimuli so in this way on basing various criteria various uh, characteristics we say a specific thing is a living all living things may not show all the characteristics what we are discussing here in this lesson there is a connection between one of the characteristic the most important characteristic shown by a living organism that is the movement movement so we think that if any organism or any object is moving that it has got life yes it has got life so it is moving the object may move in the place where it is standing or it may move from one place to another place so that is locomotion moving from one place to another place or the organism or the object is at the same place and still it is moving but the movement we consider it as a characteristic of life living organisms move do all living organisms move yes all the living organisms they have movements in them even at the cellular level but there are some differences if you see the plants and animals so if you see here the movement you can just imagine if we are talking about the movement of living organisms you may imagine a dog running a cat chasing a rat a boy playing children are playing in the ground children are running you are playing in the playground you are throwing something there so all these are the various kinds of movements you just you imagine but all these examples are of animals do plants move plants may not move from one place to another place but still they show some kind of movement in their body parts so there are some differences between the plants and animals in which in what kind of movements they show plants they show their movements in their body parts especially plants show the movements as a part of their growth so here the movements in plants are associated with movements are associated with growth in plants right so we have come to a point that movement is an important characteristic of life or living things or living organisms and the movements are associated with growth in plants or animals or whatever just let us see whether this statement is true or not it may be true but we are going to check it whether it is true all the times movements are associated with growth okay we'll take uh, 
animal, a small boy, he is growing. Year by year, he is growing. In the same way, a small seed it is growing to a small plantlet. It is growing to a big plant. So this. So growth. It shows some kind of movement. The height of that uh, body is increased. In animals, it is limited. So here, we cannot conclude that movements are always associated with growth. Why? Because if you see an example like touch me not plant. If you see a touch me not plant, Mimosa pudica. If you touch the leaves of this plant, the leaves droop, they close down. Here, there is no growth associated with this movement in the plant. Then how can you say that the movements are always associated with growth in plants and animals? We cannot say that. Because in most cases we observe in plants, the movements are associated with growth. That is stems growing towards sunlight. Likewise, by looking at some examples, we assume that the movements are associated with growth in plants and animals, mostly especially in plants. But if you see the example here, touch me not plant. If you touch that the leaves, they droop. It is not because of any growth. You don't find any growth here, but there is a movement of leaf. So movements are not associated with the growth. Then why the movements are produced and how the movements are produced in living organisms? This is what we are going to discuss in this chapter, control and coordination. If it is a plant or an animal, movements are there. The movements are caused because of what? Are all these movements useful? Do they have any purpose? Do they have any initiation? Let us discuss in the coming session. So here we have seen the movements are the important characteristic of a living thing, living organisms. Yes, they have got some kind of movements. You say it is a living organism. And here we discussed that movements are associated with growth. Of course, it is not true in all the cases, but in some cases, especially in plants, we see the movement is associated with growth. So the growth may cause movements in the living organisms, but not all the times because we have seen the other example like touch me not where there is no growth linked with the movement. So what is that kind of movement called as when you touch touch me not plant, the leaves, they droop, they close down. It's what kind of movement? It is called as a response to the stimuli. The same thing when some fly or mosquito bites or uh, stands on your hand, immediately you hit it with your hand. When you touch a hot object, immediately you remove your hand. So in this way, you're also showing some kind of movements. So somebody is throwing some ball or some book onto you. Immediately you put your hands across your face and you close your face. What is that called? What makes your hand muscles to go to this position? That is what creates that movement, what initiates the movement in your body. So closing your face is a response. Somebody is throwing something. That is a stimulus. So assume that something may fall on your face. So to defend, to protect yourself, you are closing your face. This is a response. So movements are caused by, caused as a response, response to stimuli. Response to stimuli. So there are movements may be caused because of, as a response to the stimuli in many situations. So the responses are produced for what? The responses are produced mostly for protection. So producing a movement as a response for the stimuli, that is mainly for the protection. So every organism, it produces responses to the stimuli to make that response. What is the response? What is that the stimuli? Stimuli is a kind of change in the environment. Every organism, it wants to make that change in the environment. 
it wanted to take the change in the environment as an advantage for its perusal, for its use. It wanted to use or convert that change in the environment as an advantage that is to benefit that organism. Sometimes the change in the atmosphere may cause harm to the organism. In such cases, the organism produces a response to protect, to defend. In this way, the responses are produced. But how all this is done, how the information about the stimuli, that means how the information about the change in the environment is perceived by the organism, how the organism recognizes or identifies the change in the environment so quickly. And after identifying how the organism is able to analyze the information, what kind of stimulus it is and how the organism able to produce a movement in the muscle to create a movement in connection to the stimuli. So there should the response should be always a counter to the stimuli. So how this is all done and most important thing is that whatever the movements may be we observe in the living things all these movements are controlled controlled movements. So this is a very important thing we have to observe. We may see movements in non-living objects also. You see a paper or a flag. You see a flag pole. So at the end of the flag, at the end of the pole, you can see the flag, the cloth. It's moving because of the wind. So there is a kind of movement in the flag cloth. But can we say that it is a living thing because it has the characteristic of movement? You cannot say that. It's just, it is moving because of wind. But if you see that your pet dog, when your pet dog see you with a bunch of biscuits in your hand, then immediately it wags its tail. Right? So this is a kind of response. You see the movement in that wagging of tail. So this movement is a controlled movement. Whereas if you see a flag, it is not a controlled movement. It is uncontrolled. The flag pole has not got any control over the flag. The flag is just moving, shattering because of the wind. So that is an uncontrolled movement. But here, a dog wagging its tail, it is a controlled movement. So here, the movements in living organisms are controlled movements. But how these movements are controlled? That's what we are going to learn now. So here, we learned the point, movements in living beings are controlled. So whatever the movements we see in living beings are controlled. That is both in plants and animals. But how they are controlled? In plants as well as in animals, whatever the movements we see, these are all controlled movements. In animals, first let us talk about animals. In animals, the movements are controlled by specialized tissue. So this specialized tissue, it controls the movements. That means there is a specialized tissue to analyze the stimulus and to produce appropriate responses according to the stimulus. So on basing the stimulus to protect from the dangerous or harmful stimuli, the concerned responses or movements are produced in the living organism. This is all achieved by the specialized tissue. So animals have this specialized tissue. Even if you take from the very small level of animals, you take some annelids, arthropods or whatever you say very small level of organisms to the higher level of organisms. That you come from the lower level of uh, the lower class organisms to the higher species organisms like human beings. So all these animals have got the specialized tissue but their complexity is varied. You see the highly evolved animal like human being we have much more complex specialized tissue to carry out this control of movements. So our body is controlled by the specialized tissue. 
What is this specialized tissue? Nervous tissue. Various kinds of physical movements in our body are controlled by this nervous tissue. So if you have to produce a movement, if you have to produce a movement in your hand, the muscle and the bone, they are to be coordinated. The muscles in your hand must change their shape. So this all happens because of the nervous tissue. So the nervous tissue, it helps to receive the information about the stimuli, analyze the information as well as to produce, as well as to decide which type of movement has to be produced. It will decide how far you have to stretch your hand. It will decide how you have to fold your hand, how your muscle cells, they should either shrink or enlarge. So this is all done by the specialized tissue that is nervous tissue. So internally, the information is taken to the different cells and certain activities like growth, maturity, development, these are all controlled by the controlled and coordinated by the other system, endocrine system, that is the hormones, the system that produces hormones. So our body is controlled and coordinated by this nervous tissue as well as endocrine tissue, endocrine glands. So first let us talk about the nervous tissue, how this tissue helps in control the movements in living organisms, that is in animals. Because we don't find this kind of tissue in plants. So this specialized nervous tissue is found only in animals. So first let us see how this process is done in animal bodies. Then we go to the plants and there we see how their movements are controlled. 